Oh yeah, it's winter. <laughs> yeah. The uh, the northern part of the uh, uh, Great Northern Sex Cast is uh, wholeheartedly, you know, in play. Yes. Uh, these last few weeks yes. in Minnesota. Oh God. Yes. We had negative zillion degrees below zero. Then we had rain, and then we had ice. And then there's snow because, you know, we're getting all of winter in about two fucking weeks. Yeah. Which, you know, I don't, I really, at the end of the day, I don't mind winter. You yeah, know, no, it's no, fine. No. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, but, but, you know, it, I don't like falling down and I don't like ice and hazardous driving. Mm-hmm. Cold I can live with, snow I can deal with, but yeah. Ice. And uh, although folks at uh, my St. Paul store, the lot didn't get plowed right away. And all, so it's a little, they were parking on the street and trekking across to get into the store. I mean, oh honestly, gosh. not too much stops folks from getting into a fantasy gifts. So <laughs> I'm actually uh, 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 pretty thrilled by that. I have to say, thank you. Yes. I appreciate it. Yes. Um, I had a lovely chat with a, a gentleman at the St. Paul store when I, uh, uh, when I drove out to deliver, um, uh, some extra uh, salt and sand and ice melt and stuff to the store. Mm-hmm. And he's like, I used to shop in the Midway store. And I said, yeah, I lost my parking. You know, they put the light rail through, which I love public transportation. Mm-hmm. You know, I just, I happen to be one of the businesses that got screwed by that deal. Mm-hmm. You know, life ain't fair, but yeah. I still have another store and it yeah. has a parking lot and it's lovely. Cool. I, honestly, I've never been, I, that's how I know I'm a grown up. I'm thrilled about parking lots. Oh, parking lots are a very big deal. Yeah, I know. I mean, I know people might be sharing cars and doing all this sort of stuff, but we're not to a total share economy. And we certainly don't have a perfectly uh, a good enough um, uh, public infrastructure to, like, give up a car yet. No. So I need a freaking lot. Yes. Mm -hmm. For sure. Yes. Which I've been out plowing and shoveling. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because, you know, it. It's magically not going to happen. I own some of this shit. Yeah. So I can't, you know, I am the landlord. Yeah. Yeah. Well, but, speaking. Oh, sorry. But then I get to come back in and there's like just piles of dildos all over the place. And I'm checking things, you know, and I'm going to stores and I'm meeting employees that I haven't met. So, you know, all this stuff's going on. So there's there's silver linings here. It's good stuff. I'm out. I'm doing. I'm breathing. Notice, everyone. I am not coughing. I am here. That's good. No, I'm not. I'm not complaining about any sort of stuff. I love this shit. Yeah. So it's great. You're on a good run. Um, actually, yeah. pretty good mm-hmm. run. Um, so Amy Schumer um, is pregnant. She, okay. Now she's puking her guts out. I know that. And she's absolutely documenting like the whole thing. Cause she's uh, like, Hey, this is what women go through. Yeah. And she's funny about, I, you know, I puke a lot. I'm not pregnant, but you know, mm-hmm. so I get this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, and, and you know, she can be damn funny i mean there's just absolutely no question about it um but she had a baby shower apparently and i guess her sister-in-law had this cake made have you seen the picture yeah i was hoping you'd find this i forgot to send it over uh go ahead and describe it because it's it's freaking funny it's pretty much um like inner thighs and the whole vulva area with a baby's face coming out yeah It, it and there's like a little pink little candy kiss for the anus on the bottom it's oh, yeah. hilarious and it's like this is her sister-in-law and yeah. she's it, it, and she posted it all over and i'm like I, I i think uh, that she chose uh that she met the right guy because if that's the family and they're getting into it, yeah yeah i mean that one's been one hell of a baby shower oh i'm sure i'm sure i saw the cutest thing the other day she was like walking in the park yeah and there was someone doing um uh, engagement pictures Oh. And she photobombed him. <laughs> oh, God. She's popping up at the back, and there's a dog. And then the photographer did it. It was just so cute. You That's know, awesome. I'm, I'm enjoying that part of social media. There's a lot of folks that are just, you know, that, that, that fall for outrage clickbait. And I'm like, really, people, just breathe, check a couple sources. And something, actually, something stupid, just ignore it. Don't give them your energy. Mm-hmm. So it is fun to see cute stuff like that. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Totally fun. Yeah. Um, speaking of cute things, and since we're talking about babies, which... Mm. Sort of are related to sex. Um, the uh, can be an outcome. Yes. Yes, mm-hmm. it could be. Um, so I, I hate to say this. I mean, it's not that I I don't congratulate people when they have babies, but I'm just it's not my scene. You know, I I'm childless by choice and mm-hmm. all this kind of stuff. And I prefer the term child free. Okay. 
child free. free. Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. I mean, and I don't, mm-hmm. I don't, I don't have any, I don't feel weird or stigmatized yeah. or any of that kind mm-hmm. of stuff, but yeah. So someone, um, in my, uh, sort of circle, um, semi business, semi personal related, their son had their first child. And I happen to know that, that they're Star Trek freaks, the, the husband and wife, the parents. Mm-hmm. Now, this is the first baby gift that I ever freaking cannot wait to give. I can't wait for the other half of it to come because I found, okay, the onesie is black Mm -hmm. and it says the force that awakens you, Mm -hmm. but the hat is a, so there's star Wars or star Trek for Wars. Star Wars. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then the hat Mm -hmm. is this knitted little skull cap with Yoda ears and it's green. And it is the cutest fucking thing I have ever seen. And so funny. So very funny. I honestly dressing, dressing up the babies when they have, you know, no choice on the matter Mm -hmm. is a rather fun part of parenting and being a good friend or like an aunt or an uncle. Yeah. Because, because a lot of times you don't like, you look at something, you're like, I'm not buying it for my own kid. But you know, if my sister bought something that was, you know, silly. Oh yeah. Put, put it on that damn kid. It's the joy yeah, of of, of, of that sort of shit. Yes, yes. And yeah. the one that I almost bought but didn't was the one that says Storm Pooper on the front mm-hmm. and Dark Side on the butt. Yeah. But just go into Amazon and go Star Wars baby clothes <laughs> and I'm there sure is a explosion. treasure trove yeah. There's of, a lot of funny shit there. So anyway, I'm looking forward to giving this gift. <laughs> Normally, I'm like, I don't know what the fuck to get. I don't know how these sizes work. Blah, 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 blah. You know. Oh, yeah. Uh, I just, it, it has been, it's been two years now since my last relatively close friend had a child. Uh-huh. And uh, some friends are actually already grandparents at this point. Okay. And uh, it just, I'm like, what most of my friends are very excited about now is the, um, uh, since there's the whole menopause and many of the folks have had vasectomy, there's just the whole, there is no way that this awesome sex could a- end up in a baby. Mm. I mean, that whole, I don't have to worry about this, you know, bleeding anymore in the menopause. I mean, there, folks are dealing with, you know, I'm getting more questions about uh, lubricants and a few different things. And folks have, um, uh, if they're dealing with uh, uh, cancer recovery, all that sort of stuff. You got to, you know, you got to sort of listen to your body mm-hmm. and see what's going on. But honestly, a decent water-based lube, if your mind's there, you can get your body there. Cool. You know, that way. And it, that's, but the, the, the joy of just no possibility of a baby sex is lovely yeah mm-hmm. for sure yep. for sure um you know i don't necessarily take any pleasure in slamming pop stars that i don't listen to or know their music or whatever and ariana grande is one that i feel a little bit sorry for because her concert had that attack yeah mm-hmm. and she i thought was appropriate in her grief and you know sorrow for as young as she is too because i think she's only like 22 23 years yeah, old at this point she's, she's very, younger obviously then yeah That's yeah it works you know. and so you know i i'm sorry that this happened to her but it does kind of make me snicker because i've i've said to you okay i don't mind tats but there's going to come a point and you wait where these kids that are covered in them in their early 20s are going to wonder if maybe that they needed to go quite that far <laughs> at some point in their life. OK, so that said, um, she tried to get she got a new album and she was trying to get something in Japanese that said seven rings on her palm. Did you read about this? Uh, no, but I do know uh, my daughter loves Ariana Grande and that was one of her uh, uh birthday presents was, okay. uh, was tickets yeah which okay. of course then she's headlining um coachella or something that oh, one of the sure. nights so not festival so got yeah so it got uh, pushed back oh, a okay. bunch of midwest dates but you know honestly it happens sometimes sure and uh and she she is the queen of freaking like soft lit instagram photos really <laughs> either that or she i don't you know, or she has an entire crew uh, uh making her have flawless kids because half the time i don't think she looks like herself but i'm not exactly sure what she looks like Oh, because because well. um, I'm used to seeing her in like the Disney or the Nickelodeon shows that she was in, and she was hilarious. Yeah, she, she had she had skills as a kid. Yeah, mm-hmm. no, she's she, she's. Yeah. I mean, I think she's talented. I just I so just, she so she attempted to get a tattoo. This is well, sorry. It was supposed to say seven rings, but it ended up. They, there was a character missing, and it, it reads "small Japanese barbecue." 
So then, which I'm so that you know, I saw something and I wasn't sure. I didn't delve into it. I yeah. saw that somewhere on a post. I'm like, uh, mm-hmm. a, I mean, honestly, barbecue is pretty cool. Well, what it made me think. Remember hibachis? Mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, is it hibachi? Mm-hmm. Anyway, um, but th- so then they tried to fix it, and now it says, still not right. Small Japanese barbecue finger. So now we're looking at like, did we? Are we roasting a finger or? Oh, I do, you know, it's like honestly, I, I I'm thinking that maybe. She should just, I'm assuming she's got a couple of bucks. I'm thinking. Maybe she should just go to, you know, to Japan. Yeah. Maybe Okinawa, because there used to be, you know, like, uh, bases there. I think there's still bases there. There's probably some decent tattoo artists, and they could probably fix it. That's that's a very good idea. Yeah. That's a very, very good or idea. Or that, or just put a really, glo- um, a, a, a couple of... Um, a couple of laser treatments over because it it's brand new. Lighten it up and then put, you know, like something pretty over it. Where yeah. Where is this tat? On her palm. Which is odd. But then... Ow! I Sorry, ow! Yeah. If you, if you know anything about reflexology, I would never do that. Ow! Yep. So I, 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 I've had two tats. And it's... You know, it, it, you know, it wasn't, you know, I, I wouldn't say it didn't hurt, but it wasn't, you know, there was like a couple of spots where I got closer to where there's less fat. I was less skinnier at the time um, that it hurt more than others. But for the, you know, then one, you know, one was uh, on my back and I ended up looking down a couple of, you know, days later, realizing that I had two bruises on my thighs where I'd clenched the chair. It was hilarious. Oh, yeah. Like, what the, but on my, ow. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, and speaking of Al, mm-hmm. that's a great lead in. Nice okay. transition. Very, very um, prescient of you. Uh, Lorena Bobbitt, former yes, wife uh, yes. of John Bobbitt, who, mm-hmm. for those of you who might be even too young to know the story, in June of 1993, um, she severed his penis while he was sleeping and threw it in a field. Yeah. Well, mainly because she was um, horribly and utterly abused. Yes. Mm hmm. And she was acquitted, yep. by the way, mm-hmm. uh, of a crime for that. She is since remarried. John Bobbitt has gone on to do a porn film and all sorts of other things. Um, but uh, there's an Amazon Prime uh, documentary that came out on February 5th about I her. keep wondering whether do I want to click? Do I want to know? Is it being voyeuristic? I mean, I, I mean, I knew that there was a lot more. To the story, there had to be. Yeah, it's going through the, the, you know, but but I did not know. I have to admit, I did not know the extent of the abuse. Yeah, well, Mm -hmm. and and she actually, I mean, I guess you could excuse yourself from the voyeurism charge because she wants people to see this because she said, really, John's penis got all the coverage. Mm -hmm. She goes, the you know the backstory. So this is like her story. So if you're interested in that, Mm -hmm. you can check it out. Um, And again, the last name, the the very ironic last name Mm -hmm. that he has is funny. Yeah, I just that was yeah. It made yeah. It was all about the guy and not about the abused woman. But right. then again, I mean, people are always going to focus on the blood. You know, the the immediate first blood. It's yeah. always well. I'd like to think that as a society, we're more evolved now, and that her side would be given more mm-hmm. uh, oh, yeah. attention and, 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 today. Yeah, but it it was so shocking okay. that yeah, the whole thing. Um, this is funny. Um, so, you know, soccer slash football fans in Europe are nuts. And, um, my youngest nephew, um, got to go to one in Italy and he said it was most fun. He loves to watch the international football. Mm -hmm. And he said, yeah, it's just crazy insane. So there was a confluence of events that culminated in fans of Knotts County football, uh, uh, no, excuse me, Lincoln City mm. fans, their arrival of not, uh, Knott's County Football Club, they were waving penises in the stand, big inflatable, inflatable penises. There were two reasons for this. One, it was the opposing team. But the chairman of the their their rival had accidentally, he meant to tweet uh, messages from fans of the club, and he accidentally uh, tweeted one of his own dick pics. I think that is a highly appropriate response. I think it's... And, and, and honestly, whatever city this is in, I mean, you know, because I, I mean, I, I know that there are um, uh, adult boutiques all over the world. I'm sure there was uh, quite the run on the inflatable peni. 
I think it's mm-hmm. brilliant. We have sold and played. There was a couple different types, but it, most of our novelties honestly have to be a little bit more functional and all. Although we did get in some little squeeze toys. There's a little squeeze ass, little squeeze <laughs> penis, and they're scented for some reason. I'm not sure. Um, but and it has a, the the little squeeze penis has the um, little eyes and a, and a, like a happy face on it. It's hilarious. I love it. You know, mm-hmm. speaking of that, though, um, you know, when we did the show last week and you went live with the mm-hmm. uh, dildos, I have a couple of really fun pictures from that. And mm-hmm. um, I texted them to one friend and got a hilarious response. I said, mm-hmm. guess where I am? And she wrote back and said, church. And mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, I'm doing the sex cast. But I have another friend who's intrigued with the show. Um, we're friends out through a mutual acquaintance outside of work. But she works with me. Mm -hmm. And so I started to text the pictures to her. And I'm like, nope, I'll just let her see them on my phone because I don't want anybody to accuse me of doing anything (laughs) weird. weird. You know, but yeah, it's like all of a sudden it's like, ooh, ooh, a trail. And I I live in fear that I'm going to text or tweet the wrong thing to the wrong person. Yeah, I I have occasionally. It just there's something about um, uh, 53 year old uh, texting and thumbs and stuff like that, that I will. In fact, I've texted you. I think I, I. I think I tested you like instructions that I was supposed to send to my daughter once. It was hilarious. Oh, yeah, that so was, was quite yeah, a while ago. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. And so I do, I'm like, does it, is it the second one? But I, you know, I have to really look. I, yeah. I'm like, how did, is it the bottom one that I hit? I'm not exactly sure what the motion is. I haven't like caught myself doing it yet. I mean, mm-hmm. I do it and I go, oh shit. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm like, oh, I wish I knew what the hell I was, you know, do, you know yeah. doing sometimes with, yeah. with the phone. And we used to just worry about reply all. Mm-hmm. And now, I oh, mean, yeah. we can get in so much more trouble <laughs> on the world stage. Oh, yeah. Literally. I, I, yeah. I was like, I remember I texted someone just last week. Hey, remember your bassoon? And I think Megan was like, huh? And I said, oh. She, and she's like, Rob Bruce? I'm like, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. Well. It's just hilarious. Sometimes. I have enough trouble with just Siri. Because mm-hmm. I, I use the voice mm-hmm. function a lot. Yeah. And I cannot believe, I mean, they, they, it feels to me like they would have to try really hard to fuck up stuff as crazily as it gets sometimes. I am, yeah, I'm rather confused. I, I haven't, I, I turned it off. I just, I think I speak too fast. I, I'm not sure what it is or I hesitate. I'm not clear enough. I don't know what the hell it is, but Siri and I do not get along. I made it go away. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Although it did uh, save my mom when she fell. She managed to get Siri to work. We don't know how and dialed 911. That's so that amazing. was pretty awesome. That's so I'm I'm all, I'm all about. I mean, I get it. I it's just beyond my capabilities right now. Understood. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Um, I couldn't have made up a headline this good. Doctor Wang removes balls. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this happened in. China. Oh, no. um, so it's really Dr. Wang. Okay. It's not like some disgusting, you know, nickname or something. A 12 year old boy was left unable to pee and forced to have surgery to remove, wait for it, 39 magnetic balls from his penis after he shoved them up his urethra. X ray image. Kids put things. Uh, I just, I'm, I'm fascinated. It was never really something I did, but. Obviously, a lot of kids do this. I didn't eat just, paste either, yeah, and I hear that was quite there. popular. No, I had uh, I had to bring my kid to the ER a few times for uh, things that she shoved in her nose. Really? Yeah. Mama, my nose hurts. Why? Well, I put a rock in it. <laughs> yes, I just said that. It's going to be out there forever because I... <laughs> That was fascinating. Uh, mm-hmm. Okay. Anyway, um, the x-ray images of this medical predicament show the magnets lodged deep inside the boy's privates in a U shape. Mm-hmm. That just, I don't even own that in part, the- and it's freaking me out. So, I mean, um, Had he swallowed them, it could have been more dangerous because they work their way through the intestines and it perforates it, and then there's sepsis and stuff like that. That's why they want to keep, um, you know, little magnets away from kids. It's, I mean, horribly, horribly da- um, dangerous. Mm-hmm. So I guess the surgery was as described as minimally invasive, and um, he it was a little tricky, um, but uh, everything's fine and he's recovering. Mm-hmm. So he's going to be okay, but you know, whatever. Did, did I send you the other balls story about the doggies? 
No. Maybe did I, did I not forget to say because I was clicking everyone. So um, I'm flipping through the joys of social media, and this is in North Carolina, mind you. There's there's a groomers there uh-huh. that will uh, cover your dog's testicles in glitter. Oh God! They 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 put corn syrup on and then edible glitter. And, you know, and I honestly, I don't care what you want to do to, like, human balls. Because we, I mean, we sell stretchers and weights and crushers, all this sort of stuff. Fine. No, do not. I, I can't. I'm trying to think about. I think I, I know I sent it to Megan, so I'll make sure she puts it. Uh, actually, I'm not. At one point, what what is the thought process to putting glitter on your dog's testicles? Decorating your dog's so, balls? No. With glitter, yeah, with edible glitter. And I'm like, I don't care if it's edible glitter and corn syrup. I don't think that's particularly probably good for the damn dog anyway. I don't care if they're going to lick it off. Yeah. But I mean, but I, I mean, I mean, but at one point, I mean, I'm just like, gl- okay. I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm scanning really hard for this whole thing. Mm-hmm. Now, I've often said, only semi jokingly, mm-hmm. that for all I do for my pets, it is mm-hmm. their job to amuse me. Okay. Mm-hmm. Like, like I'm glad I have a funny cat. Mm-hmm. Um, and not one of those ones that hides all the time and, and you know, whatever. Um, and my dogs are, you know, whatever. But, dogs are lovely. But I love your doggies. I don't think I would humiliate. Although, I mean, what's the difference between putting a Halloween costume that they don't like on them? Oh, but it's not, I mean, it's glitter on their testicles. <laughs> I mean, you have to sit there and brush corn syrup on a dog's testicles and then sprinkle glitter on it. Well, and I'm wondering what the persona of the customer who who uh, pays for this service is, because men often resist neutering because it's, you know, they have issues with it. Um, but then if women have a dog that has balls... I don't know that women would want to call attention to those, but guys aren't into glitter. I'm so confused. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I mean, a lot of time I can like dig through the where the thought process may have started. I can n- nothing. Yeah, there is absolutely nothing. I'm there's you know I, I read the little article and I looked at the little and I looked at the pictures and I just kept blinking and then I, I could have sworn I clicked anybody. Then I sent it to everyone in the office because if I had to see this. And and my brain had to be this confused. I had to share with everyone. It was sort of like the, hey, does this taste bad or does this smell yeah. bad? This is, this is what I mean. I admit this. Is, I had there was no way that I was keeping this in my brain. It needed, and now I'm sharing it all with you. I, uh, there is something to that whole misery loves company thing. I, it just it was. Mu- yeah. I just I, I'm like and no, and I just got back and just a couple of no, no, but it was not not one, <laughs> no. Oh, yeah, I think that's probably one that no nope, nope. should Peta mm-hmm. should take up. Mm-hmm. Um, so okay, it's it's funny anytime something like this happens. I mean, it's mildly amusing. Somebody uh, drew a big giant penis in the snow outside the EU European Commission, um, you know, window. Okay, mm-hmm. in in Brussels, right? And ha, 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 you know, wh- whatever message they're trying to send. And they all thought it was kind of funny. But the amusing aspect of this particular thing is, um, you know, they're saying they're arguing over whether or not it was a, a, a member of European Parliament or if it was done by a Brit or a Belgian. And they're saying this is definitely drawn by a continental Brits do cock and balls from a totally different perspective. So they're arguing uh, over being able to tell the nationality of the penis drawer by the, the way that they portray it. That's funny to me. You know, I can see that because I, mean, I mean, things are different in different cultures. I mean, you know, cats meow differently in different languages. Not everybody says meow. Yeah, and so I'm assuming that the the culture that you're going to draw things differently, maybe it was circumcised versus uncircumcised. <laughs> oh, it could be. Well, think about or the whether, difference or, between or whether, or whether they're doing like a side view or an erect right. view. Are the ball? You know how exactly? Right. I mean, what? Where is the graffiti? <laughs> but what I love about this is that everybody's like. Oh, that couldn't, the argument shifts completely from the fact that they were, somebody drew a dick to where, you know, EU officials could see it. I think that's hysterical. But like, think about the difference between, say, an American Warner Brothers cartoon Mm -hmm. versus anime. Yeah. Very different styles. So I Mm -hmm. think that's, I think that's funny. 
did, 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 did was there a consensus or is it just or is or is the um or is the debate the, the um, debate rages on just debate? Okay. yeah 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 uh i i just i don't know about this next one i <laughs> i can't understand and i so this gal in Albuquerque um, for months. I'm sorry, I cannot hear the word Albuquerque without thinking of Bugs Bunny. I just got to get that out of my head. Okay, let's go. Al- Bugs Bunny? Bugs Bunny always says I should have taken a left turn in Albuquerque. Oh, yeah. right. Okay. Or, or something. Yeah, I sort of yeah. like you can't say Menominee without da 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 da. da. Yeah, oh, okay, oh Menominee. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah Menominee. Got it. Got okay. it. We never, ever trail off, do we? No. So um, this woman says that this stranger has begun, has been leaving deli meat i.e. baloney on her door step for since January 1st. Okay, I'm not finished. There are more details. Okay. It's not just a piece of baloney or a package of baloney. It's a baggie of baloney with some bread in there. And um it, they they put it right um on the little doorknob and then he walks away and um the problem is uh you know she first thought it was joking but she got close enough to, you know, she's going to go throw it away and it smelled like urine and she's really freaked out. I guess other neighbors have been receiving the sandwiches, so to speak. Um, and, uh, one person is moving because they're, they're so freaked and police said that they can't do anything unless they catch a mid delivery, but they're going to like beef up uh, patrol. She's worried that he's going to start pooping. I mean, there was, I mean, uh, they they caught that guy. There was a guy in St. Paul that was just randomly hitting people. And I think, you know, they, they caught him and he wasn't in the m- middle of hitting someone or whatever going through there. All you need is a security camera somewhere. Someone is obviously, you know, obviously disturbed. They, you know, they'll get him. I wouldn't move. I put up a security camera. And, yeah. You know, like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot uh, there's a lot of other things so i mean I'm, I'm not saying it's not weird i'm not saying it's a little freaky yeah but there's a there's levels and then again i'm not there i don't know the neighborhood and all that sort well, of stuff but I, honestly i a, um a, a security camera uh, that is not that expensive i mean the neighborhood could get together and they could rotate it around and get a couple of them well here's mm-hmm. the thing I, you know, just like so many things, because I do tend to lean towards the chicken little school of, you know, evaluating mm-hmm. things. Um, what is the escalation? I, you know, I think that, they would have would have done it by now. Okay, all right. Baloney, huh? Yeah. Okay. I have baloney at home. I'm not sure it's going to be appetizing anymore. Okay. No. I just occasionally just a good baloney sandwich or a fried baloney sandwich. Oh, d- don't you love oh. how it bubbles and looks oh, like yeah. a sombrero? Mm-hmm. Yeah, fried. Yeah. I- for my childhood. It's like, they're just certain things. Yep. Mm-hmm. For sure. Um, boy, uh, quite the hullabaloo on the tube between uh, Leicester Square and Waterloo in the UK. Um, it's now gone to trial. Um, but basically, there's a gay adult film actor, a, an escort, and a third man that had a crazy threesome on video and in view of other people. Um you can't do that. Okay. You, I mean, obviously people do do that stuff, but should you be doing that? No. Because once again, you don't have consent from the people that are around you. Mm. You know, it's going through there. I mean, if it, you know, I'm, I'm not sure they could have got permission, but you know, if, if, if something like that, did, uh, that's, that stuff drives me nuts because it, 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 it puts a, it puts a black mark on people that have interesting sex in other places, you know, per, w- without disturbing other folks. Yep. Lumps everyone together, which is why you end up with like these law, you know, laws that are all encompassing and end up hurting sexuality and different things. Mm-hmm. Yes. Well, the crime was outraging public decency. They did plead guilty. So, but yeah, I mean, and it's like full anal the whole night. I mean, it's really kind of a shocking um, story. On and a moving train. On a moving train. And... Oh, Kevin, okay, there's a skill level there. I mean, I can't you know, yeah. not deny that. Well, there's three of them. I mean, mm-hmm. I don't even know. Train, I, I, there might have been another train. But the, the thing I thought was interesting about this was that this was posted by um, a non-participating gay male. And I thought, well, why would they note that he's gay? I, uh, that I a get, gay guy turned in the other gay guys. He just didn't... And, and honestly, if you say that a person... I mean, it, the label on there, it, just, it was people having sex. 
regardless, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it's, but, but in the, public, who you're having sex with at that point, yeah, it is is moot, and you know it's going yeah. through there. Well, yeah. So they made a point that it was three gay men fine, yeah. But then the gay that that another gay guy rep- and I, I remember just reading this going, I don't understand why this is a thing because the person who wrote it is probably homophobic and decided that they were going to write a story that denigrate. I mean, just having the sex in public. Yeah, I don't care. Either. That's that's the story. Who, th- you know, let people figure it out. Yep. Because mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure they wouldn't have said a uh, straight um, uh, bystander uh, filmed or something. It, no. That yeah. just not would have happened. Yeah, yeah. Not. Nope. That's the point. Um, this is scary. Um, and, you know, these sugar daddy dating sites that are out there, which I'm sorry. If I'm a guy and I'm smart enough to have done something besides perhaps inherit, but to have quite a bit of money, why would you put yourself out there f- for women who admittedly want you for your money? I just, I mean, <laughs> well, you, you know, up front, I mean, you know, you, you, you're not, you're, you're, you're not, you're not, you're not wondering, you know. Yeah. I mean, there is that aspect of it, but for the most part, I'm, I'm pretty sure that most folks could probably figure it out anyway. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, here's a situation gone bad. i um, a gal named Jacqueline AIDS. Um, says she's not crazy, but she's in love and she's got to, uh, go face. She's going to be on trial for stalking and trespassing. She's 33. She met this, uh, successful CEO whose identity miraculously is still not revealed here. Um, and it was on the dating app, uh, Luxie is what it's called. And, um, apparently she sent him 159,500 texts over 10 months, um, and uh, even her friends told the New York Post, yeah, she's a gold digger. Um, but at one point... I don't have my phone near me, but somehow I wanted to do some math on that. But that's... that's um, yeah. You know, obviously, she's got an unlimited plan because you're not paying for text yeah. on that shit. Oh, no, no. Mm-hmm. Um, the the uh, testimony says that there were as many as 500 texts in one day, some loving and some really threatening. She's trying to say things that she actually texted and it's proven. I'm going to quote one here. I'd make sushi out of your kidneys and chopsticks out of your hand bones. You should die. I'll kill you, but I don't want to be a murderer. <laughs> so she said those is... were jokes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. How long were they dating? It doesn't say, but, um, I'm, I'm guessing not too long before. Yeah. 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 Oh my God. Terrifying. Okay. Speaking of terrifying, let's talk about robots. We haven't yet today. Um, oh, welcome to robot corner on the great Northern sex cast. Yeah. Thank you, Colleen. I mm-hmm. like the intro. Mm-hmm. Um, self-awareness. This is the thing that Stephen Hawking said was going to happen and that eventually we would all be slaved to machines. Mm -hmm. And basically they're trying to now, and it's here in our country, um, they're using a process of self-simulation to teach robots what they are, okay? And so um, this is the director of the Creative Machines Lab at the University of Columbia in New York. Um, And he says, well, if we want robots to become independent, to adapt quickly to scenarios, um, then it's essential they learn to simulate themselves. I don't know that I want them to do that. I mean, I I can see. I mean, I mean, this obviously sounds like someone wants a robot that can do multiple things. Mm -hmm. But honestly, I mean, we've I mean, you just need a robot that can do the one particular thing. You know, it it wells this bit. Or it drives this car or it does, it diffuses that bomb or, you know what I mean? You don't, uh-huh. you know, I mean, I, I'm not exactly sure um, why, you know, you just have it do one or two texts and then it's never going to get sent. You know, I did, you know, you know, yeah. this one Fox. Okay. You know, there's your task because you believe me, once you can do all this stuff, Folks are gonna, you know, or figure out something bad to do with, it, you know, to do with it. Yeah, going through there. I mean, that's one of the reasons I'm not particularly thrilled about the idea. I mean, of the of the self driving cars. I understand why it would be a good thing. Yep. And I've said this before, but unless you can magically turn all the cars in the world at one time into yeah. it, and I think that's going to be the problem there. It's 
because you can do something doesn't mean that you should. Yeah, it's funny that you bring up the self-driving cars Mm -hmm. Um, because I had this in here because we talked Mm. about this on the last show. Um, I do have a story here um, where um, there is a company, it's a tech company called, I don't even, I want to say it's Huawei Mm -hmm. is the name, is how you pronounce it, but they're developing technology um, for driverless cars to be able to detect when a driver is drunk and um, also tag you for using your phone. So um, the it'll be for cars that have autonomous or manual driving features, you know, either or. It would stop an intoxicated driver from taking control of the car. Um, they'd use artificial intelli- uh, intelligence to assess the driver's condition and decide on the appropriate action to take from a verbal warning to locking the controls or calling the police. It would also be able to spot if you're falling asleep at the wheel, texting, or in a road rage incident. I just don't know if I want my car surveilling me like that. Although we could probably, uh, the road rage one, I mean, I mean, some, some asshole shot at a school bus driver, uh, you know, in Minneapolis and uh, there was a kid on the bus. So, I mean, honestly, um, how, uh, uh, how the state troopers did not, you know, uh, uh you know, <laughs> manage not to take this guy and his road rage. And, you know, it's winter here. There's going to be some, you know, it took an hour to go uh, uh, like six miles last night. Yeah. You know, because of it. Yeah. You know, uh, you know, something like that. That person should should never be allowed to drive again. Yeah. It's going through there. Yeah. Stopping, uh, stopping that guy's car was not going to stop the road rage. I don't know what, what they're going to do. It's <laughs> veer it off, lock their cars, keep them in there. I mean, what could I mean? I could see on on the drunk driving if someone if somehow there's a detector that can smell the alcohol on your breath or whatever's yeah. going through there. But how the hell would something like that, you know, stop the <laughs> stop well, a road and, rage? And, and what's defined as such? Yeah, because somebody could be listening to the radio and yelling at Mm -hmm. a talk show or (laughs) you you know what I mean? It's like, how in the hell is it going to be able to, I don't know. Or or you're just, I mean, I, I am, uh, I'll be behind someone and I'll like, they'll be going, you know, way too slow on a perfectly good day. And I'm like, Hey, it's the pedal on the right. It works. You know, (laughs) or, and there's, I mean, I live three and a half miles from this office and the amount of people that run red lights in that three and a half Miles really is fascinating. Really, and I just yeah, there, there might be a few choice words that I. I mean, I I know better. I mean, I look, you know, what's going through there. I yeah. I see it all the time. I drive a red car. The amount of people, it's, and it's not a small car. The amount of people that want to uh, occupy the exact same spot in the road that I'm in, yeah, <laughs> is also fascinating. Yeah, I'm like, oh my god. Yeah. So there's a few choice words, you know, stuff. Oh, my God. I just, mm-hmm. yeah. I mean, I'm trying to get better, but I get pretty incensed at people, but I don't act on anything. I just mm-hmm. stay inside my vehicle and yell by myself. I'm, I tend, I, uh, there, there are, there are station, there are music stations that I listen to when I'm more pissed off at stuff than when I'm not, <laughs> I'll put on the jazz. No, I, I, I don't want lyrics uh-huh. when I'm, when I'm, when I'm angry at shit. Or yep. people are doing dumb things. I will get rid of any words, and I put on like the jazz or the you know or the, or or uh, just anything without words. Yeah, sans words. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, this got just an honorable mention because um, this this Australian burger joint is you know getting kudos as well as you know criticism. Um, for something that they're doing. Um, first of all, they're called Pablo's Esco Burgers mm-hmm. in Melbourne, Australia. And um, they have a burger called the Patron or the Patron mm-hmm. that comes with a line of powdered garlic and a fake rolled up $100 bill. <laughs> Sorry, that's just funny. It's, it is funny. I mean, oh, no, 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 that's just, that's, that's just funny. Pablo Esco Burger. Um, but a lot of mm-hmm. people are coming up and saying, Glor- pearl clutching it glorifies drug use no it doesn't. and yeah and the plight of the lives of the colombians that pablo escobar killed and ruined and mm-hmm. you know stuff like that but um i don't know pablo escobar just cracked me up and i just <laughs> threw it in there because i thought it was funny there is a i'm blanking on the name i'm gonna have to search for the story another restaurant they got some sort of yelp or google or something review 
in which they said that uh, uh, the servers should uh, show more skin. So what the restaurant did was uh, put a potato skin uh, uh, um, item on the menu and all profits from the uh, potato skins are going to go to a, uh, a women's shelter. Sweet. So I thought that was great. I, I go, that. I, 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 if the restaurant was in anywhere near me, I would go get some potato. You want more skin? There you go. Put this tape. One That's of the great. best things I read. See, mm-hmm. yeah. I, I wish that people would, would do more combating mm-hmm. idiots or things that they don't like with... Humor and mm-hmm. cleverness than yeah, humor clevers or ignore because there's a lot yeah. of stuff out there. There's I mean there's a lot of clickbait about different things. I'm like you know if you look at it and it's really that stupid, you know rep- you know report it or ignore it. But you don't have to engage. Mm-hmm. You know it's going through there, or at least do a little research before you have <laughs> your little outrage tree. Yep, because I mean there there is a lot of legitimate things to be outraged about. <laughs> Yes. And so that was, uh, you know, uh, yeah. and, and the thing is, you can, in fact, you know, my my favorite thing is, is how can you be or the what about of what about is you can be outraged about more than one thing at a time. Believe me. And I, I can love more than one thing at a time. Yeah. There is no I mean, these are finite things, honestly, mm-hmm. or, you know, not finite. You know what I mean? You know, it's just you, there's plenty of plenty of everything to go around. Mm, oh, yeah. I'm capable of a lot of different things at once. For sure. Um, so, um, I guess there's a guy, a serial masturbator. Okay. In other words, a human. Okay. (laughs) A serial masturbator was caught after, um, doing it so often that he actually got caught by the Google street view car. Like, you know, more than once. So it took him a while, but they finally, you know, got the victims to, to identify him. 27 counts. So in other words, so there's a public. Oh yeah. Okay. So it's not, okay. It's not, I'm sorry. I miss, but yeah, Mm -hmm. the Google street car view. Mm -hmm. Um, he did it so often that. Yeah. You know, I, I just, I've, how much sensation and I'm assuming male here, would you possibly have if you masturbate that much? I mean, that's just, you know, and it just, you would think that at one point you would be just a little numb. I do it through there, but I don't know. We have a lot of different stuff because I mean, we're what a day or so away here to put, you know, from, from Valentine's, mm-hmm. you know, hopefully, you know, folks are doing that. Get some lube, do something. You don't want to injure yourself. No, please. Yeah. Please um, and, uh, do that safely. Yeah. Spank just- safely. <laughs> Oh my god. Um mm-hmm. finally today, mm-hmm. um there's a uh a morning show in Britain um and uh you know kind of the typical format to many that we have here. Mm-hmm. Um and they had a sex expert on. Mm-hmm. Um so and her name is Kate Dawson and uh she spoke about teaching kids about sex and masturbation and she said on television that uh any kid over the age of eight should be educated on sex, porn, and self-pleasuring. Okay. People are freaking out. Oh, of course they are. Um, because it's like uh, they don't remember, like, you know, back when they were six and they realized they rubbed on something and it felt good. I mean, really, there's an age-appropriate discussion about everything. You, know, you, don't, plunk, you don't plunk them down in front of a, uh, um, a video meant for, you know, self <laughs> Someone who is 25 and wants to know about, is it okay if my penis goes to the right or the left? Or what if my uh, 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 labia are different sizes? I mean, this is not appropriate here. But the, the, yeah, you walk in on your kid and they're rubbing something, you go, look, you know, that's perfectly appropriate. And generally stuff like that should be done in, in uh, you know, in private. Mm-hmm. And, then you, and then you move on. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's what, the, you know, I think, that, I think what she's mostly talking about there is... Is a really quick conversation about not ha- feel shame about your body. Yeah, and I just because, and I, and I'm sure whoever wrote the story and the people that are up in arms, are, are taking as the fact that you're just you're, you're going to plunk them in, 
you know, down in front of a porn movie. You know, that's not what these people, not, not what yeah. folks are saying. Well, some of the mm-hmm. comments uh, are including but not limited to kids should be kids. And my well, son is seven. If I taught him about masturbation, I would be disgusted. I want to listen to this. Keep him as innocent as I can, as though it is her job mm-hmm. to do that. Your, your, your kid's grabbing his dick already, lady. <laughs> And if you, you know, and if you, you know, if you, yeah, yeah, just let's just, you know, what that means is she wants to shame them into, you know. (sighs) (laughs) Oh, Jesus. I just Mm -hmm. remember, I just remember one of this little kid to me one time. I said, hey, lady, hey, lady. You know, I was like 20, mm-hmm. and I'm like looking at this little kid like, what are you doing? But I mean, hey, lady, your kid's grabbing his dick. Big deal. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's just like, I don't know. Pearl clutching. Yeah. Pearl clutching. I mean, that's not, that's not what they're doing. just saying, that, you know, don't shame your kids, you know, and if, you know, when something comes up or they notice something mm-hmm. or is going through there at a, a, a you know, a, a, and it's not... You know, a four-hour course on it. Just when you know when something happens, you talk to them in an age-appropriate manner, so they're not ashamed of their bodies. So everybody just settle down <laughs> <laughs> and get busy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 